The way we communicate today is vastly different than even a decade ago. With more outlets to give and receive information, it sometimes requires st strategy to communicate effectively. Owner of POD Strategies, Mark Feifley, will share his experience with the ways we communicate strategically. Thanks so much for coming on the show today. Thank you. It's great to be with you. You've built up quite a resume since you've graduated from the University of North Dakota, and let's just run through a couple of those things. Um, you were Deputy Communication Director at the Republican National Convention, um, Press Secretary and Communications Director for the Interior um, Se Secretary, White House Deputy National Security Advisor and um, Strategic Communication Global Outreach for President George W. Bush, um, early advisor on the scene of FEMA in New York City at Ground Zero after the September 11th attacks. And now currently you are the CEO of um, POD, uh, a public relations communications firm in Washington, D.C. And that probably wasn't even all the jobs I, that you've had. Yeah, but it, 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 th that and $4 you can get a free cup of coffee. You know, it's, <laughs> it's a lot of great experiences and a lot of work, but it, and I met a lot of really wonderful people and the experiences of going to UND really helped put that together. You've even, you've described yourself as a man that kind of runs towards the fire. What exactly do you mean by that? I, I, I think that when one is trying to plan their career and what they want to do, you don't always go for where the biggest title is or the best title or the most salary you're going to make or the biggest office you're going to have, but go to where you can learn the most and you can meet the most people and you can make a mistake or two and you can learn from that and you can continue on. Now I'm a little bit older, so I don't necessarily run to the fire. I kind of walk <laughs> to the fire, or sometimes I walk to the Barca lounger. But earlier in my career, that's the way I used to, I used to operate. All right. Well, you know, communication is you know, what all your careers have focused on here, and social media is something that you've used in your jobs. Um, you know, how has social media changed since the beginning of your career in Washington, D.C.? Yeah, and you know, right now the campaigns like President Obama and and uh, Governor Romney, they have tens of thousands of email addresses. In 2000, when I started working in politics, a national political party had about 14,000 emails, less than the student body of UND, and that was our email activist lists. We didn't have Facebook or YouTube or uh, Twitter. Uh, we had blogs in 2004, which was the very popular thing. 2008, of course, was kind of the, the, the explosion of Twitter and of Facebook and YouTube. Now it's one of the main way that candidates are communicating. They don't even sometimes put an advertisement on TV, they put the advertisement right on YouTube and they get a million hits on it. So it's changed the way of how we communicate, how we communicate our ideas, how we reach people to talk about the issues that are important in this election cycle, and it's really been a huge dynamic change in, in the way that people communicate in, in politics. Why is it important to be informed about this type of communication? Well, it's either, either you're informed about it and you're, you're in that world or else you don't succeed these days. Less people are watching, no offense, but the nightly newscasts and things like that or are getting the hard copy of the New York Times or the Grand Forks Herald. We're, we're getting the information instantaneously on our, on our, uh, uh, on our cell phone, on our, our, our iPad. Uh, we're watching things on our, on our personal computers or, or our, our Mac and we're not communicating the same way that we used to where we watch nightly news or we get, a, we get a, a, a newspaper. So you have to communicate where people are going to get their information these days. And that means a complete change in the way that we used to communicate before. You know, with all this instant communicating, you know, there's room for error. Have you ever been a part of a social media mishap? I think I've launched a tweet or two and thought, oops, I misspelled that, sorry, and you have to delete it. And, and yeah, it does, because it's very instantaneous now. You know, it used to be, well, I'll, I'll, I'll save it and I'll, I'll, I'll send it out later. But now, the news story hits immediately with the people that are involved in it, are tweeting it, are Facebooking, are putting pictures up on Instagram. And you have to be very, very careful. And there's been corporate examples where people are not sure that they're on their, gov their, their company uh, Twitter account. They think they're on their personal one. And they say something that's kind of risque or something that's harmful. And so there's, that, that opens up a whole new world for the way that we have to communicate. We've got to be far more careful these days. Um, how hard is this damage control in regards to social media misuse? Uh, it's it, instantaneous is the problem. Uh, there, there have been situations before where, where a corporate entity thinks that they're, that they're tweeting from their personal page and, and they'll say something you know, mean-spirited about a, a politician or they'll say something that, that has a, a word in it that is not proper. And, 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 and in other instances, it's the videos that come out where, where one has to immediately take it back, say I'm sorry, 
and then and then try and do the damage control and move on from there. Okay, and then Twitter is you know a form of social media, and you actually nominated it for a Pulitzer Prize. Why do you think it was deserving? You of know, that? during the Iranian elections in two thousand and nine, the way that Twitter opened up the capabilities for people in the Middle East, people in Iran, to be able to organize in their in their in their areas, it, to be able to communicate with videos on YouTube, to to put groups together in the town square that they couldn't have before because they didn't have that capability, because of an authoritarian government. Now people can communicate, whether it's Egypt or it's Tunisia or it's the United States of America or it's an area of Africa. That opens up a whole new area for people to communicate and to get involved in politics. All right, well, very interesting. Thanks so much for coming on the show today, Mark. Thank you.